Yashar, Jasher 42. And they went and sat on the opposite side, and the distance of a bowshot, rather, about the distance of a bowshot, and they sat there to eat bread, and while they were eating, they held counsel together what was to be done with him, whether to slay him or to bring him back to his father. They were holding the counsel when they lifted up their eyes and saw, and behold, there was a company of Yishma'elim coming at a distance by the road of Gilad, going down to Mitzrayim. And Yahuda said unto them, What gain will it be to us if we slay our brother? Perchance Elohim will require him from us. This then is the counsel proposed concerning him, which you shall do unto him. Behold, this company of Yishma'elim going down to Mitzrayim. Now therefore, come, let us dispose of him to them, and let not our hand be upon him. And they will lead him along with them, and he will be lost amongst the people of the land, and we will not put him to death with our own hands. And the proposal pleased his brethren, and they did according to the word of Yahudah. And while they were discoursing about this matter, and before the company of Yishmaelim had come up to them, seven trading men of Midian passed by them, and as they passed, they were thirsty, and they lifted up their eyes and saw the pit in which Yosef was immured. And they looked, and behold, every species of bird was upon him. And these Midianim ran to the pit to drink water, for they thought that it contained water. And on coming before the pit, they heard the voice of Yosef crying and weeping in the pit. And they looked down into the pit, and they saw, and behold, there was a youth of comely appearance and well-favored. And they called unto him and said, Who are you, and who brought you hither, and who placed you in this pit, in the wilderness? And they all assisted to raise up Yosef. And they drew him out and brought him up from the pit and took him and went away on their journey and passed by his brethren. And these said unto them, why do you do this, to take our servant from us, and to go away? Surely we placed this youth in the pit, because he rebelled against us. And you come and bring him up and lead him away? Now then, give us back our servant. And the Mid Midyanim answered and said unto the sons of Yaakov, Is this your servant, or does this man attend you? Perchance you are all his servants, for he is more comely and well-favored than any of you. And why do you all speak falsely unto us? Now therefore we will not listen to your words, nor attend to you. For we found the youth in the pit, in the wilderness, and we took him. We will therefore go on. And all the sons of Yaakov, approached them and rose up to them and said unto them, Give us back our servant, and why will you all die by the edge of the sword? And the Mid Midyanim cried out against them, and they drew their swords and approached to fight with the sons of Yaakov. And behold, Shimon rose up from his seat against them and sprang upon the ground and drew his sword and approached the Midyanim and he gave a terrible shout before them, so that his shouting was heard at a distance, and the earth shook at Shimon's shouting. And the Midyanim were terrified on account of Shimon and the noise of his shouting, and they fell upon their faces and were excessively alarmed. And Shimon said unto them, Truly I am Shimon the son of Yaakov, the Ivri, who have only with my brother 
destroyed the city of Shechem and the cities of the Emorim, so shall Elohim moreover do unto me, that if all your brethren, the people of Midian, and also the kings of Canaan, were to come with you, they could not fight against me. Now, therefore, give us back the youth whom you have taken, lest I give your flesh to the birds of the skies and the beasts of the earth. And the Midianim were more afraid of Shimon, and they approached the sons of Yaakov with terror and fright, and with pathetic words, saying, Surely you have said that the young man is your servant, and that he rebelled against you, and therefore you placed him in the pit. What then will you do with a servant who rebels against his master? Now therefore sell him unto us, and we will give you all that you require for him. And Yahuwah was pleased to do this in order that the sons of Yaakov should not slay their brother. And the Midyanim saw that Yosef was of a comely appearance and well-favored. They desired him in their hearts and were urgent to purchase him from his brethren. And the sons of Yaakov hearkened to the Midyanim, and they sold their brother Yosef to them for twenty pieces of silver. And Reuven, their brother, was not with them. And the Midianim took Yosef and continued their journey to Gilad. They were going along the road, and the Midianim repented of what they had done in having purchased the young man. And one said to the other, What is this thing that we have done? in taking this youth from the Ivrim, who is of comely appearance and well-favored. Perhaps this youth is stolen from the land of the Ivrim, and why then have we done this thing? And if he should be sought for and found in our hands, we shall die through him. Now, surely, hardy and powerful men have sold him to us, the strength of one of whom you saw this day. Perhaps they stole him from his land with their might and with their powerful arm, and have therefore sold him to us for the small value which we gave unto them. And while they were thus discoursing together, they looked, and behold, the company of Yishmai Elim, which was coming at first, and which the sons of Yaakov saw, was advancing toward the Midyanim, and the Midyanim said to each other, Come, let us sell this youth to the company of Yishmaelim, who are coming toward us, and we will take for him the little that we gave for him, and we will be delivered from his evil. And they did so, and they reached the Yishmaelim, and the Midyanim sold Yosef, to the Yishma Alim for twenty pieces of silver, which they had given for him to his brethren. And the Midyanim went on their road to Gilad, and the Yishma Alim took Yosef, and they let him ride upon one of the camels, and they were leading him to Mitzrayim. And Yosef heard that the Yishma Ali were proceeding to Mitzrayim, and Yosef lamented and wept at this thing that he was able to be so far removed from the land of Canaan, from his father. And he wept bitterly while he was riding upon the camel. And one of their men observed him and made him go down from the camel and walk on foot. And notwithstanding this, Yosef continued to cry and weep, and he said, Oh, my father, my father! And one of the Yishmei Elim rose up and smote Yosef upon the cheek, and still he continued to weep. And Yosef was fatigued in the road, and was unable to proceed on account of the bitterness of his soul. And they all smote him, and afflicted him in the road, and they terrified him in order that he might cease 
from weeping. And Yahuwah saw the ambition of Yosef and his trouble, and Yahuwah brought down upon those men darkness and confusion, and the hand of everyone that smote him became withered. And they said to each other, What is this thing that Elohim has done to us in the road? And they knew not that this befell them on account of Yosef. And the men proceeded on the road, and they passed along the road of Ephrathah, rather Ephrathah, where Rachel was buried. And Yosef reached his mother's grave, and Yosef hastened and ran to his mother's grave and fell upon the grave and wept. And Yosef cried aloud upon his mother's grave, and he said, O oh, my mother, my mother, O oh, you who did give me birth, awake now and rise and see your son. Now he has been sold for a slave and no one to pity him. O oh, rise and see your son, weep with me on account of my troubles and see the heart of my brethren. Arouse, my mother, arouse, awake from your sleep for me and direct your battles against my brethren. Oh, how have they stripped me of my coat and sold me already twice for a slave and separated me from my father and there is no one to pity me. Arouse and lay your cause against them before Elohim and see whom Elohim will justify in the judgment and whom he will condemn. Rise, O my mother, rise. Awake from your sleep and see my father, how his soul is with me this day. And comfort him and ease his heart. And Yosef continued to speak these words. And Yosef cried aloud and wept bitterly upon his mother's grave. And he ceased speaking. And from bitterness of heart, he became still as a stone upon the grave. And Yosef heard a voice speaking to him from beneath the ground, which answered him with bitterness of heart and with a voice of weeping and praying in these words, My son, my son Yosef, I have heard the voice of your weeping and the voice of your lamentation. I have seen your tears. I know your troubles, my son, and it grieves me for your sake, and abundant grief is added to my grief. Now, therefore, my son, Yosef, my son, hope to Yahuwah and wait for him, and do not fear, for Yahuwah is with you. He will deliver you from all trouble. Rise, my son, go down unto Mitzrayim with your masters, and do not fear, for Yahuwah is with you, my son. And she continued to speak like unto these words unto Yosef, and she was still. And Yosef heard this, and he wondered greatly at this, and he continued to weep. And after this, one of the Yishmael Alim observed him crying and weeping upon the grave, and his anger was kindled against him, and he drove him from there, and he smote him and cursed him. And Yosef said unto them, May I find grace in your sight to take me back to my father's house, and he will give you abundance of riches. And they answered him, saying, Are you not a slave, and where is your father? And if you had a father, you would not already twice have been sold for a slave for so little value. And their anger was still roused against him, and they continued to smite him and to chastise him. And Yosef wept bitterly. And Yahuwah saw Yosef's affliction, and Yahuwah again smote these men and chastised them. And Yahuwah 
cause the darkness to envelope, rather envelop them upon the earth. And the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and the earth shook at the voice of the thunder and of the mighty wind. And the men were terrified and knew not where they should go. And the beasts and camels stood still, and they led them, but they would not go. They smote them, and they crouched upon the ground. And the men said to each other, What is this that Elohim has done to us? What are our transgressions, and what are our sins, that this thing has thus befallen us? And one of them answered and said unto them, Perhaps on account of the sin of afflicting this slave has this thing happened this day to us. Now, therefore, implore him strongly to forgive us, and then we shall know on whose account this evil befalls us. And if Elohim shall have compassion over us, then we shall know that all this comes to us on account of the sin of afflicting this slave." And the men did so, and they supplicated Yosef, and pressed him to forgive them. And they said, We have sinned to Yahuwah and to you. Now therefore, vouchsafe to request of your Elohim that he shall put away this death from amongst us, for we have sinned to him. And Yosef did according to their words, and Yahuwah hearkened to Yosef, and Yahuwah put away the plague which he had inflicted upon those men on account of Yosef, and the beasts rose up from the ground, and they conducted them, and they went on, and the raging storm abated, and the earth became tranquilized, and the men proceeded on their journey to go down to Mitzrayim. And the men knew that this evil had befallen them on account of Yosef. And they said to each other, Behold, we know that it was on account of his affliction that this evil befell us. And now, therefore, why shall we bring this death upon our souls? Let us hold counsel what to do to this slave. And one answered and said, Surely he told us to bring him back to his father. And now therefore come, let us take him back, and we will go to the place that he will tell us, and take from his family the price that we gave for him, and we will then go away. And one answered again and said, Behold, this counsel is very good, but we cannot do so, for the way is very far from us and we cannot go out of our road. And one more answered and said unto them, This is the counsel to be adopted. We will not swerve from it. Behold, we are this day going to Mitzrayim, and when we shall come, rather shall have come to Mitzrayim, we will sell him there at a high price, and we will be delivered from his evil. And this thing pleased the men, and they did so. And they continued their journey to Mitzrayim with Yosef.